right, this is John Colo with GrowingYourGreens.com to do another Growing Your Greens in a Minute episode. And so this is my short format video, so hopefully I'll talk really fast or this will be pretty short for you guys. But anyways, what we're gonna do this episode is actually share with my share with you guys my top five tips for gardening when it's over 100 degrees out and how you could survive and how your plants could thrive at the same time. You know, our needs are kind of similar to our plants' needs. And uh, in this episode, we're gonna show you guys how I survive and am able to garden in the desert in excess of 100 degree weather. So today was, I think, one of the first days where it's over 100 degrees and probably for the next week, it's gonna be well over 100 degrees. And, you know, I'm surviving <laughs> as are my plants. And just because it's over 100, does that mean you should sit and be a couch potato inside like I kind of was a lot of the day? Absolutely not. You know, one of the things I try to do when I wake up in the morning is look in the mirror, you know, shave and if I need to, but uh, also ask myself a question, John, what can you do for your garden today? Anything in life, I want you guys to grow and, you know, put your attention on. Because if you don't put attention on your garden or other things that are important to you in your life, like your wife or your husband, right, they're not going to be happy and they may go the way of the West, right? So send that text message to your wife or your husband, you know, that you love them, you miss them, and that you wish you were there with them. This is especially important in long distance relationships. <laughs> but we're not talking about relationships today. We're talking about gardening in the heat. So let's get down to it. Uh, way number one to garden in the heat is w dress appropriately. So, you know, a lot of times I'll just like take off my shirt and, uh, you know, have my shirt off in the garden. And, you know, this is important to stay cool. And if you're a lady, yeah, take off your shirt if you're in the private. And if you're not in the private, well, put a bikini on. <laughs> but uh, other than that, you want to dress appropriately. So, like, I might wear shorts, might wear pants just with my top off. That also allows me to get sun, which, which in terms of makes vitamin D for me which is very important for our health the other thing i do is wear a hat this is quite important so this i got a thing you know let me tell you guys i got a thing like i'm kind of lazy like i'll buy a hat and like i don't really care if it's still got a tag on there where is this if this has still got the tag on there and i mean i don't i'm kind of lazy i just like i don't care if there's a tag on it and then i guess people see it like john why you got the still tag on the i mean i don't care man the hat's working it's functional tag or not right anyways yes this is a lady's hat Hi, this is Juanita Kohler from GrowingYourDreams.com. No, but seriously, I just wear this lady's hat actually because it has a nice long brim on it actually. Look at that. This is like a really long brim. This is a large hat. Look at that. So this actually keeps more sun off me so that I stay cooler. Now this is my wide brim hat. <laughs> and then I also have a nicer one that's a bit thicker. Uh, Smith & Hawking that I like a lot too. <laughs> kind of look like Huckleberry Finn or something. But yeah, this also keeps the sun off of my face and keeps me a little bit cooler. And just like we want to stay cool in the sun, sometimes your plants might want to stay cool in the sun also. So some recent transplants, you know, I cover them up in the daytime to give them some sun protection. Now this is not needed for every plant. This depends on the plant, how young it is, how much you're watering it, and the variety of the plant itself, right? I mean, I'm not planting lettuce in the 100 degree weather, not good. But a few crops that do well in the heat, Eggplants love the heat, no sun protection. If you're sun protecting them, you're lame. <laughs> Same with basil. Now the tomatoes and peppers, they may benefit from some sun protection if you're not on a good watering cycle and nutrient program in your garden. All right, let's move on to number two is to, it's important for us and the plants, stay hydrated, right? When it's 100 degrees out, right, I'm just not watering for 15 minutes once a day, right? I water that bed right there one minute, four times a day. And if my uh, computer controller, watering controller, would allow me to, I'd probably water six times a day for like 45 seconds, which I'm working on upgrading. You know, this is important to stay cool, much like for us. We need to stay hydrated. Our plants need to be hydrated. We cool down by perspiration, and our plants uh, cool down by what's called transpiration. So we drink water and we sweat. It keeps us cool. Dogs don't sweat. And our plants uh, transpire. So what this means is that when they're hot, you know they're gonna pull up some of that cold water coming out of the ground out of the pipes that's in the ground they're gonna pull it up through their bodies it's gonna keep them or their they don't have bodies there <laughs> their vascular system it's gonna go through their uh, vascular system and then it's gonna basically evaporate out the leaves so they're constantly pulling up water to keep themselves cool so they don't fry either because nobody wants to <laughs> fry not even a frog in a frying pan <laughs> but uh, yeah so that, that that's how they keep themselves cool but the benefit of the transpiration which I learned from Leslie Doyle a longtime gardener in the Las Vegas desert 
is that when they're pulling up the water, they're also pulling up nutrients. So this will also allow them to grow faster. And if you shade out your plants, put too much shade on them, they're not going to get as much sun, they're not going to photosynthesize as much, and they're not going to want to transpire as much, which means they may get fat and lazy. <laughs> But yeah, so I want you guys to get out every single day and stay hydrated. Upon wakening in the morning, you know, I'll drink uh, 24 to 32 ounces of liquids to stay hydrated because I'm dehydrating in the desert here every day. Now, if I wasn't in the desert, maybe I'd drink about half of that right when I wake up. And then later when I'm hungry, I would drink you know, or eat something for breakfast. But it's important to stay hydrated, especially throughout your workday. So oftentimes during the workday, I'll take breaks and have more coconut water or some fresh made juices to stay hydrated. So you and your plants need to stay hydrated. It's definitely very important. Number three way to garden in the heat in excess of 100 degrees like it was today. And one of my tips is garden early and garden late, right? <laughs> Those are the top tips like get up early with the sunrise. I think it sunrise around 5 a.m. I could be out here 5 a.m. to like uh, 10, 11 a.m. And it's actually just in the 70s. It's really beautiful, nice weather. And likewise, like we're here at uh, 7.30 uh, at night and it gets cooler in the evening. It's still not as nice as the morning time, but it's not like 100 degrees out, you know. It's only like high 80s, which is comfortable, right? So garden in the morning, garden at night. And this is especially important if you guys are getting up there in age, getting more mature. Um, you know, people tend to be more sensitive to the heat. Uh, you know, so always be careful when gardening in the heat. Not that I recommend going out and gardening in 100 degree weather, but so garden early, garden late. Those are the best two times a day. And no matter what, keep your plants watered. Get an automatic irrigation system for your plants so you don't have to water in the middle of the day. And whatever you do when you're watering, if you are watering in the middle of the day, don't water the freaking leaves <laughs> because your plants are basically going to, you're going to burn your plants. The, the water is going to evaporate and it's going to burn the leaves. Don't do it. So tip number four, if you want to garden in the heat in excess of 100 degrees is be smart about it. And what I like to do when I'm gardening during those times is work in the shade. I have this nice uh, shade structure overhang where I could work in my greenhouses and do something in my greenhouses so I could still you know, be productive and work with my plants and keep my food production going. Even in the middle of summer, I could work in a shade of what, one of my greenhouses with my overhang, or I could work in one of my parts of my yard. You know, my, my yard gets uh, shade at different times of the day. So the later afternoon, my compost alley gets shade and the earlier in the day, this side of the yard gets some shade. So I'll also, you know, work in the shade because it can be significantly cooler in the shade than not in the shade. So that's just yet another tip. So like now we're down to actually the last tip, tip number five, uh, tip to garden in the heat of the day is to take breaks and cool down on your break. So if I'm working in the middle of the day, which I'm not necessarily recommending to you guys, but I don't really mind working in the middle of the day and I've, I've acclimated to this. So it's not like I just, I'm going to work in the middle of hundred degree weather, like over years of living in the desert and hot climates, I've been working outside. And you know, if, if you're not used to doing this, like it's just like hardening off your plants. When you bring your plants out and they've been growing inside, you can't just like Put them outside and leave them out 24 hours man they're gonna freaking shrivel up right if you're uh, to harden off your plants if you're growing them inside you're gonna take out your plants that you've been growing inside in artificial lighting you know outside in the full sun and you know warmer weather for like an hour each day or maybe even a half hour and then take them inside and every day you bring them out extend the time a minute five minutes you know ten minutes you know an hour and leave them out for a pr progressive longer amount of time this way your plants will acclimate to the weather and then finally you could plant them out in full sun like I've been you know doing but uh, that being said we also need to acclimate to our environment whatever that is so if you've never worked out in the hot sun you know work out work out there for two minutes I know you guys could handle two minutes maybe a minute and then go in and take like a 10 minute break and cool down so nowadays what I like to do is I'll work a good even in 100 degree weather I'll work maybe a good 15 20 minutes you know also as much as I can in the shade. Sometimes I just got to do something that's not in the shade and then I, I got my hat on and I'll work 15, 20 minutes. I'll get a nice sweat and once I start getting a nice waterfall, I'm like, all right, John, you're a little bit overheated. Time to go inside and take a break. And then I'll go inside and make a nice cold smoothie, a fruit and vegetable smoothie, or I'll make maybe a cold juice. Or, you know, another thing I like to do is make frozen, 100% frozen fruit sorbets through uh, one of my juicers where I just feed in like bananas and it just mushes all the bananas up into a banana like ice cream, which that's one of the best things to cool me down. I'm hot. I go inside, make a banana ice cream or cold, you know, smoothie, banana berry smoothie, banana green smoothie with frozen bananas, drink it down. 
cool down, kick back, half hour, then come back out for another 15 minutes. Okay, so yeah, you're taking a long breaks, but you're cooling down, but then you could work longer instead of just, I'm gonna go, I'm a man, man, I could like work four hours in the 100 degree plus weather heat. Don't do that, guys. Like, don't kill yourselves over gardening. It's just gardening, man. <laughs> have fun, we're supposed to be having fun. So like, I have fun, I work, I take a break, and then I come back out, I work some more, then I go back in, you know, I get hot, take a break, come out, work in the shade. So it's easy. You guys could totally garden in the heat. And yes, number one, make sure you acclimate yourself. Always be safe. And if you're not used to gardening in the heat, you know, do the buddy system. Have somebody that you're, you know, uh, you're going to be out there with. So in case something happens to you, because I don't want any of you guys to get heat stroke in, in just in sake to grow some of your own food at home. That's really counterproductive. So yeah, be safe instead of being sorry. So the last tip I'd like to give you, this is kind of like the bonus tip, right? Is another way that it's, that allows me to survive in the heat and also allows our plants to survive in the heat is special compounds that they make for themselves, but not necessarily for us. These things are called, you know, uh, if you want to call them plant metabolites or plant phytochemicals or plant phytonutrients, it's basically what the plant does when we get it gets sun and nutrients from the ground and water it basically makes nutrition into its leaves you know the pepper has a nice deep rich red color the tomatoes are red you know blueberries are purple all these different colors are known as antioxidants or um, uh, different phytochemicals and these are protective and this is why the plant could be out in 100 degree weather and survive because the plant has evolved living in nature and makes these phytochemicals and phytonutrients that protects itself from the sun. And guess what? When we eat these plant phytonutrients and phytochemicals, that gift of protection is conferred upon us. So I don't recommend any gardeners out there eating a white diet with processed flour, processed sugars, white potatoes, you know, all these white foods. You know, the more white foods you eat, you know, sooner you're going to be six feet under and being compost instead of enjoying life. I want you guys to eat colorful, rich food. So I eat an antioxidant rich diet. I eat purple carrots, you know, I have, you know, blueberries and blackberries and raspberries. All the berries are wonderful and things like dark beets and, you know, uh, dark bell peppers, highest in vitamin C and tomatoes with lycopene and watermelon with lycopene. I want you guys to eat the rainbow foods because when we eat the foods that have these rich antioxidant colors, including your greens, these have things like lutein and zeaxanthin and other phytonutrients and phytochemicals that are protective for us and also protective for our plants. That's how they're able to survive in the elements a lot longer than you are. And so yeah, so another way that I'm able to survive and garden in the desert is because eating these foods that give me, number one, sun protection from the inside out. We don't need to necessarily use suntan lotions if you, uh, you know, or sunblock or whatever. A lot of those are quite toxic. You know, no other animal on earth, you know, uses sunblock, but yet they don't get burned unless they're, you know, a hybrid white, white albino rabbit or something like that. Animals eat foods high in antioxidants. We don't. This is a big problem, not only for being able to work in the garden, but also for disease conditions based on my research. So I want you guys to eat antioxidant rich, grow antioxidant rich, eat antioxidant rich. We're all gonna have a better time on this wonderful planet we call Earth and be able to do whatever we love to do in life. Like I really love to garden, hang out with my girlfriend and travel. So yeah, I want you guys to be successful at whatever you guys do. If you guys enjoy the short format video, hey, please give me a thumbs up to let me know. I'll be sure to do more uh, of these videos in the future, sharing with you guys my tidbits of knowledge that I've learned over all these years gardening and just living a healthy lifestyle. Also be sure to check that subscribe button, click that subscribe button right down below to be notified my new and upcoming episodes that I have coming out about every three to four days. And be sure to check my past episodes. My past episodes are a wealth of knowledge. Over 1,100, maybe even 1,200 videos now. Share with you guys all aspects on how you guys could grow your own food, become independent of the man, and become healthier at the same time. So uh, once again, my name is John Kohler with GrowingYourGreens.com. We'll see you next time, and until then, remember, Keep on growing. All right, this is John Cole with GrowingYourGreens.com. Today, another exciting episode for you. Coming at you from my beautiful backyard garden on a beautiful spring day. Summer's almost here. Hopefully, you guys got your gardens planted out.